I'm in uh, Istanbul uh, attending a Market Hub uh, conference uh, by HBX Group and I have the pleasure to have with me Paula Felstad, who is the CTO of uh, HBX Group. That's right. And it's great to speak with you. Thank you for being with me, first of all. Uh, earlier today, you have uh, presented on stage uh, two realities yes. in travel technology. Yes. Could you tell us a bit more about that? Yeah, sure. So the two realities I discussed today is firstly augmented reality um, and the second one is the reality of cyber security in the current travel industry both i think are really important topics for everyone in travel to be talking and thinking about so these are the realities that we should focus now mostly you mean i think so yes okay I yeah no why, i mean why uh, augmented reality now you mentioned that uh, it's around for a long time already 2009 was yes. the first uh, Yes, it has been around for a long time, but I think this is where, a bit like AI, where there are various hype cycles that, that particular solutions go through. But the reason I think that um, augmented reality is something that everybody in travel should be looking and thinking about is the pure power that you have in the phone, but also the advance, advances that have been done um, particularly with uh, Google or Apple or Airbnb or even the Ray-Ban Meta glasses, um, really makes augmented reality in the reach of um, the average traveler, but also they are starting to expect that capability as they travel around. Anybody who's used Google Maps Live View, you know, that becomes the normal. And therefore, we in the travel industry need to be aware of what's in the normal experience of our travelers, and therefore, embrace it and make sure that we're able to link in with this new capability. So it's not going to be these huge glasses that uh, <laughs> you are entering a virtual reality world? Not the big not goggles, anymore. no. Okay. no. I right. think actually, you know, it's still got some way to go, so I'm not expecting this to be suddenly solved next year or the year after. But the, the Ray-Ban glasses are interesting that it's a mass consumer price point for a set of glasses that can live stream directly into your Facebook page. And I think for me, that is really the, the, the new thing that's triggering the, the challenge from us at HBX to get everybody to start thinking about it. Can you give me a couple of examples how this could be implemented in the travel and hospitality industry? Yes, yeah, so obviously Airbnb have already done their you know, try before you buy where you can walk through in a 3D environment the property that you're looking to to um, purchase for that period. I think also um, understanding that people want to choose which room they're staying in, you know, what sort of view does it have. I think also the, the, the idea that you can actually guide people to explore more facilities at your hotel or more experiences or um, offers or services through how they're using their camera, when they take pictures, you know, all of those are natural processes where augmented reality have a natural way of connecting the traveler with a, a better and a wider experience. Currently, it's a rather expensive technology to implement. Uh, do you foresee that uh, it will become accessible for smaller enterprises, destinations? Yes, I do. And I think what I'm really saying is be prepared for this to become the new normal mm -hmm. so think about it in advance think about how you might want your destination or your hotel to um, be represented in, in this augmented reality world um, because it's coming so therefore you either embrace it or you try and run and hide from it but it's definitely coming so in this way you, you minimize the risk of the customer to take the traveling decision actually, yeah yes yeah Absolutely. And I think this is really where I don't think most of us are that aware of just how much processing power is in these phones now. Mm -hmm. um, and that processing can handle Google Maps. Well, it can handle, you know, a 3D rendition of your hotel. And it doesn't have to be a major undertaking, which is very expensive. But I think hotels and distributors need to be really thinking about it and making sure that they are prepared. 
Now the second uh, reality that yeah. you introduced, the cybersecurity, which is a rather sensitive topic. <laughs> yes. Some people, they scare about it. Yeah. Some, they don't want to talk about it. Yeah. So well, what is happening here? So the whole purpose of actually being transparent and talking about it is to make it less scary mm -hmm. and more a collective topic that we should be discussing and should be addressing as a travel industry. And as I said in my speech today, you know, we are seeing um, an increase in the cyber security challenges that we face, but we can't solve them one by one. We have to solve them collectively as an industry because we're all connected to each other. Mm -hmm. And I think this is what is unique about travel is we are all very interconnected with each other. And therefore, the weakest link in the chain is therefore the level that everyone else is operating at. And this is why I think there are certain things that everyone can do that are not expensive, not difficult, that will help protect the whole industry, one link in the chain at a time. Do you think that the tourism authorities and the Travel Trade Association should play a role in this? I think they have a key role in, in actually enabling discussion around this topic. As you say, mm -hmm. some people are scared, seems a bit you know, complicated. And I think embracing the fact that we want to have um, our travelers safe, not only physically safe with all of the, um, you know, it's natural to have smoke alarms, it's natural to have fire extinguishers in your hotel. Yeah. We need to have the same natural thinking around cybersecurity because our travelers trust us with their data. Therefore, we should treat it with that in mind. I can understand the solutions that may, we may implement through the softwares. But what about the users? There are plenty of people working in the travel and hospitality <laughs> industry, plenty of customers that yeah. interact together. Yeah. I think the bigger, bigger risk is there. Absolutely. I think you're completely right. And that's why um, in our discussions earlier, we were really talking about how do you actually train and empower the um, travel industry employees to be much more cyber smart, cyber aware. How do we help them not be a target of these cyber actors? So if we would like to give some golden uh, rules to the travel and hospitality companies, what would that be? So for me, number one rule would be let's talk, let's share experiences, let's combine to create a much more challenging target for cyber security criminals. I think the second one is always make sure that all of your software is up to date, you have email filters, you have um, training, um, and you take cyber really seriously. And then I think the last point that I would say is that we collectively as an industry need to engage with the um, police, the regulators, the authorities um, to influence and guide them in how they can support the travel industry given the level that we're dealing with today. And if we speak about a small and medium sized uh, hotel, let's say, yeah. or travel agent, they cannot afford to have a cyber, cyber security expert in-house, no. how they can handle it? I think this is where there is plenty of free material available that can help explain. There's also training um, for um, increasing awareness around phishing, which is the number one way that small businesses are targeted. Um, I think also just being up to date on your software, actually having antivirus, having email filters is relatively cheap. Mm -hmm. And therefore, it's a worthwhile investment to actually prevent um, a cyber security incident occurring because the cost of cleaning up after one is far That's greater right. than the prevention. Okay, excellent. Thank you very much. Thank you.